After 50 years of bitter warfare, the Eastern Federation has beaten the Europa's armies and taken control of the Eurasian continent. But pockets of resistance remained, fighting the oppressive new regime, staying in Eurasian Zone 7. After years of war and the devastating effects of global warming, our environment has undergone drastic changes, leading to increased instances of famine, drought, and genetic mutations. Amid this turmoil, a renowned scientist by the name of Kashan stands in front of fellow researchers, eager to share his groundbreaking discovery. He reveals the existence of a unique type of cell, which he has aptly named neocells, found within a primitive ethnic group. Astonishingly, these neocells possess the extraordinary ability to transform into any type of other cell, making them capable of regenerating any type of tissue. After presenting his thesis, the other scientists were unwilling to put their faith in it because it was still in its early stages. After they all clear the room, Kataro is approached by Kaoro Naito, a man working for Nico Herol Inc. And apparently Nico appreciates his work and tells him that they've already built a lab to house his research. Kaoro then mentions Kataro's sick wife and indicates that he would be able to save her. Leaving the offer on the table for Kataro to think about it, Kaoro leaves. The following day, Kotaro and his family take a photo shoot to celebrate the engagement of Tetsuya, Kotaro and Azuma's only son, and he's getting engaged to his girlfriend Luna. And although his father strongly disagrees, Tetsuya plans to join the military and fight alongside his friends. A year later, Tetsuya is drafted into the army and sent to Zone 7 to fight the war. There, he experiences traumatic situations where he's forced to kill unarmed civilians. As he's walking with his group, he finds a young child sitting next to her dead parent, and unaware that it was a booby trap, Tetsuya picks her up and triggers the bomb, causing an explosion that instantly kills him. Back in the city, Midori, who is now almost blind, is sitting in her beautiful garden, working on her research with her assistant. When she suddenly hears something, she asks her assistant to go have a look, and while waiting for a response, Midori is approached by the ghost of her dead son and assumes that he's finally come home. A few minutes later, a man from the army enters the garden and informs her of the terrible news. While still working in his laboratory, Kotaro also gets the news about his son and is devastated by it, and while contemplating what he had just heard, a bolt of sudden and unprecedented lightning hits his lab and activates the neo cells that he was growing in small ponds around the large lab. A strange spectacle unfolds as the cultured body parts intertwine, giving rise to a multitude of beings. In a state of panic, Kotaro commands the guards to exterminate these reanimated creatures, and with a hail of bullets, they mercilessly gun down the majority of those emerging from the water. Amidst the bloody aftermath, a handful of resilient souls manage to survive, one of them seizing the very vehicle that Maduri was arriving in. After the incident, Kotaro, believing that the pool that used to house the cultured body parts of people had now been transformed by the lightning bolt still attached to it, brings the dead body of his son and puts him inside of it. Tetsuya's ghost watches his father submerge him in water and cries, screaming that he didn't want to return. And a few seconds later, Tetsuya gasps and opens his eyes. Later, the small group of reanimated creatures that survived the attack take Madhuri, who had attempted to save one of their dying friends, and head to Zone 7. After a long and treacherous journey through the snow, they manage to find an empty castle which they decide to use as their stronghold. When they look around, they're surprised to find hundreds of robots ready to be used. After naming themselves Neo Sapiens to clarify themselves as a new race, they declare war against humanity for trying to murder them all. Burai, one of the Neo Sapiens who survived, assumes the role of leader and launches an attack on the cities using thousands of robots and kidnaps military scientists to force them to work in their new factories. The Neo Sapiens then come after Kozuki, Luna's father, and an armory specialist, and attempt to kidnap him. During the attack, Tetsuya is awakened from the chamber that he was put in to stabilize his system dressed in one of his father in law's special combat suits. An intense fight takes place between the Neo Sapiens and Tetsuya, but he manages to hurt her severely, forcing her to escape. 
Being hurt, Kozuki also dies in his daughter's embrace. Tetsuya sees that the streets of the city were filled with robots that actually came to decimate it, which were led by Burai. Using the special power the suit gives him, he manages to destroy most of the robots before he is taken down by the leader of the Neo Sapiens. In the palace, the general's son, Kamijo, chastises the old leaders for being concerned only about their health when their city was under attack. Angry, he orchestrates a forceful takeover and removes his father along with his advisors from power. Kaoro, who had been watching this spectacle with delight, introduces Kotaro as the father of the Neo Sapiens and the man who would help them destroy the race. After he betrayed his father, Kamijo announces to the public that his dad has been killed in a terrorist attack. Later, when Kaoro and Kotaro were alone, the scientist confesses that he didn't know how the Neo Sapiens came to be, but Kaoro tells him that he needs to focus on his studies and the military would help him find his kidnapped wife. Trying to find safety, Tetsuya and Luna attempt to escape to Zone 7, but Luna was poisoned by the environment and becomes sick. When he tries to take care of her, Tetsuya is approached by a doctor wearing a hazmat mask, and the doctor takes them back to his house and treats the sickly Luna. While they wait for Luna to get better, the doctor tells Tetsuya a story about Kashuan, a guardian spirit who protected them. For years, they lived peacefully under his protection until one day, everything changed. A border dispute with their neighbors started a senseless war. Suddenly, Tetsuya started hearing gunfire outside and rushed out to see what was happening. He noticed dozens of the same battalion he used to belong to murder and kidnap the village people and was disgusted by the sight, regretting ever being involved in the war. Using his powers, he single-handedly fights the army, killing them one by one. From afar, one of the Neo Sapiens watches him with anger, resenting him for being the reason one of their own had died. Ready for revenge, the Neo Sapiens Baris Shen attacks Tetsuya, and while he battles Baris Shen, the soldiers of the Federation kidnap Luna along with many other Zone 7 citizens. Noticing the men dragging her away, Tetsuya tries to rescue her but he's derailed by Barashan who is adamant about getting his revenge. Although he made several attempts to maneuver his way through the angry Neo Sapiens, Tetsuya was too late and watches the ship taking Luna and flying away. Angry, Tetsuya returns to the battle with Barashin, and after he hears his name, he introduces himself as Kashuan, dubbing himself as the guardian of the people. After a long fight, the two manage to hurt each other severely and lay passed out on the ground. The aircraft that had taken Luna returns to the city, and all the prisoners are transferred to a train. Suddenly, the prisoners start to riot, giving Luna and the Neo Sapien who followed her inside the ship enough time to try and escape. While they run to another part of the ship, they witness dozens of humans hanging in body bags and realize that they are victims of Zone 7. The two are attacked by an angry soldier who manages to kill the mute Neo Sapiens, but before he can turn his attention to Luna, Kotaro appears behind him and strangles him to death. Once the train arrives at the city, Kotaro takes Luna and her heart Neo Sapien friend to his lab, where they run into Kaoro, who holds Kotaro at gunpoint for failing to complete the experiments. Suddenly, the stone lightning bolt still sticking to the bloody pool where body parts were being cultured starts to break down, somehow dragging Tetsuya's unconscious body there. As his father and fiancé watch, Burai appears through the giant doors with his robot army and claims Tetsuya as his brother, indicating that although they were born from different circumstances, they were both Kotaro's children. Carrying Tetsuya's unconscious body, Burai leaves the facility followed by Luna and the mute Neo Sapiens. After they return to the stronghold, the mute Neo Sapiens die from his severe injections, while Burai and Luna hold his hands. Back at the lab amidst the wreckage, Commander Kamijo arrives, witnessing the departure of Burai and his formidable army. Seizing the moment, Kamijo demands that Kotaro reveal the truth, and the scientist proceeds to explain the extraordinary attributes of the newly activated Neo Cells. However, Kamijo, burdened by his convictions, deems the act of bestowing life upon the deceased as nothing short of an abomination. 
at the stronghold, Tetsuya gains consciousness and starts looking around the castle. In one of the rooms, he finds his mom lying on the bed, her eyes closed. When he tries to wake her up, she finds out that she's already dead, and angry and assuming that she was murdered by Burai, he launches himself against the Neo Sapiens, but realizes that he was no match for him. Burai holds Tetsuya by the throat and tells him that he's going to destroy this evil world and build a better one in its place. He tells Tetsuya that amongst all of the people, Madhuri was the only one he found good because she had heard their plea for life and tried to help them. Unwilling to believe his words, Tetsuya launches himself at Burai, but he was easily overwhelmed. Outside the castle, hundreds upon thousands of soldiers under the command of Kamijo have arrived to attack Burai and were facing off against his infinite robots. While watching the brutal war unfold, Burai remembers the conversation that he had with Madhuri about kindness and then feels bad about what he decided to do. Pressing on one of the control buttons, he activates the huge robot that is the size of a thousand times any other and unleashes it on the Federation soldiers and after being approached by his mother's ghost, who tells him to save everyone, Tetsuya joins the fight against the giant machine. The commander and Kotaro manage to make it to Burai's palace and encounter the Neo Sapien himself. Kamijo reveals that Burai was also human despite what he thought because he was made from the secretly harvested body parts from the Zone 7 victims that were attacked by the activated Neo cells. It is revealed that the people of Zone 7 were the original humans and the Neo cells could only be found inside their genes. The research to extract the cells had failed through due to lack of sufficient amount of bodies, and the general then decided to make national policy fit his medical needs and declared Zone 7 the enemy of the state so they could be harvested for their body parts. In a poignant realization, Kamijo acknowledges the deep-seated animosity harbored by Burai and his kin stemming from their sacred ancestral lineage. Determined to restore order to the streets, Kamijo vows to eradicate the vermin that Burai represents. Burai's mind is flooded with fragments of his former self, a tender existence spent alongside his beloved wife and newborn daughter. Consumed by anger at the Federation's cruelty, Burai's fury propels him forward, rushing toward Kamijo. As the two adversaries draw near, Kamijo, unyielding in his resolve, grabs a bomb in his hand tightly. With a calculated move, he pulls the pin, unleashing an explosion, fully aware that the blast could claim both their lives. Outside the stronghold, Tetsuya manages to stop the giant robot by altering the clock that it uses to function, halting its movements as it stands in the middle of the army. A few seconds later, the robot explodes, unleashing a nuclear explosion that clears away everything in its path for miles. Only Luna, Tetsuya, and Kotaro survived the blast as they were far enough away from the bomb, and Kotaro then carries his wife's dead body in hopes of resurrecting her, but his son refuses, mentioning the suffering that his research has brought to a lot of people. Angry at his son's refusal, Kotaro pulls out his gun and shoots Luna at the head to teach Tetsuya a lesson. Devastated by his father's cruelty, he launches himself against Kotaro and kills him, and Luna's body, which had fallen over Burai's, comes in contact with his blood, which ends up resurrecting her. Heading over to where he was standing at the edge of the cliff, the two watch all the souls rise from the fallen bodies, and as Luna and Tetsuya embrace, the bright souls accumulate into one and surround them, covering them with light. Luna then forcibly tears open Tetsuya's shirt, unleashing a radiant burst of light that surges forth from within him. With an otherworldly energy, the luminous beam traverses the vast expanse of the universe, eventually finding its destination on a distant planet. As the movie draws to a close, a sense of tranquility settles upon the characters, each one in their unique way discovers a newfound serenity in the aftermath of their deaths. The final scenes reveal a glimpse of these contented versions of the characters, basking in the embrace of peace and fulfillment. And with that, our movie comes to an end.